Hi, and welcome to another SEO Hangout with Josh Mashinsky. That would be myself. Uh, today I've got some very interesting uh, leaks and uh, SEO uh, uh, information for you uh, from our favorite, Mr. John Mueller, and uh, some other uh, SEO stuff that's been going on. So let's get right to it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to a Hangout I was doing last time, which was on April the 7th. John Mueller did a hangout. I didn't quite finish all that information. Inf information. I didn't quite finish that info. Apparently, I've been struck retarded. Um, so, you know, that happens when you get punched in the head now. So, um, there was some information that he talked about in that hangout, and I just wanted to finish that off and then move on to his next one. So, this was from April 7th, if you want to go back and get the context for that. Okay. He's mentioned this before, and I've mentioned this before, but I just want to mention it again that um, be very careful not to have off-topic pages on your site. Uh, he said that Google gets confused, their algorithms get confused when you have off-topic pages. So for example, if your website is about red widgets, if you suddenly have a page about pink elephants, this is going to confuse Google. And he warned against this um, in a uh, uh, both for PageRank, but he also warned against this for Panda. He says it, it could be a quality issue for Panda, uh, and so be careful not to uh, have a lot of off-topic kind of uh, um, uh, articles on your site. If it's vaguely related, fine. If you're in a health niche and you're talking about this kind of health, this kind of health, this kind of health, that's fine. But if it's completely off-topic, you know, it could confuse their algorithms. It could make you look like a, a spammy site that people just post their articles to and try to get links, that kind of thing. Okay, here was a very interesting leak that John Mueller um, uh, gave us, and I've mentioned it before, and I'm going to mention it again. Uh, John Mueller admitted that the Panda patent that was recently talked about by Bill Slosky, uh, and he mentioned that it was bad, that the, the patent said, it was bad if a page has links but no one searches for the brand or the site, that there is a statistical relation between the number of links a site has and the number of brand site searches that you have or in the case, in this case, don't have. You should have, but don't. Um, that this will trigger a panda check, and this, so this was very interesting. Um, I've always, I've always wondered what would trigger a panda check. I thought maybe it was bad usage metrics. I thought that was probably the most likely one. Um, you know, or or maybe anyone who's on the, the front page of the SERP for long enough, maybe they'll all be checked. And essentially, this is this is the, the case that this patent, this panda patent, and people are figuring out, trying to figure out how could this be panda related? This is how it's panda related, and that it triggers, John Mueller is kind of leaked, he's admitted this is how it triggers panda, that if you have a lot of links, but not a lot of brand searches, there's some statistical relationship there, they found that regular sites have, and if you don't fall within that norm, that will, could schedule you for a panda check. Because, and it makes sense, because a lot of sites that have links, but no one's searching for their brand, that tells you that they're not the kind of brandy, um, white hat kind of check us out, we're awesome kind of site. It's, it's like the kind of site that no one goes to or, or no one wants to go to um, because all they have is backlink pages, right? All they have is spamming articles for, for, for backlinks. Uh, and so this I found very interesting. Um, I mentioned this before. And so this kind of also is interesting in the sense that it cinches up a lot of things that John Mueller has said, is that people have been speculating, well, why is he saying this? This is the reason why you want to have a short URL. John Mueller has mentioned a number of times uh, for about a year that you want to have a short URL. And he said reasons like, well, because so people can search it, so they can copy and paste it, so they can easily link to it, they can easily share it. Um, but in this case, it's because people, so they can search it. You want to have a short URL, not... Um, get the best red widgets here because we're awesome.com. You want to have a short URL so that people can search it, so to search your brand. Because if you don't have a brand uh, to link uh, ratio, that could be either um, a bad panda trigger, it could be an indication that they think that means you're a bad site. And it's not a half bad indication when you think about it. Um, because they want sites that people are generating buzz that people are looking for and, and searching out. Uh, but it could, so either it could trigger a panda check or even be used as part of the panda check. Uh, so really, domain searches in Google are a type of third-party recommendation. Um, 
And that, when you think about it, this is also why Google could be so steadfast as to having the query deserves diversity, the QDD algorithm, always putting up negative stuff. You ever notice that Google loves to put up negative stuff about you or negative stuff about a particular search? You always see blah, 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 scam or, or blah, 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 you know, scandal, that kind of thing. You know, third or fourth down there, they like to put up a negative one. And they're having the people vet, they're having people uh, vet or choose which one is more interesting for that query, which one better serves the query, what is the information that people need to know about or they want to know about the most. And they get people to do this for them by, okay, well, I know, okay, so they search for redapples.com, we'll put red apples up front, and then we'll also put red apple scam, and we'll see which one people click on. And if they click on it too much, then redapples.com will start to go down, red apple scam will start to go up. Or at least red apple scam will definitely stay there for sure. So this is another reason why, and people have said that's immoral. Like, what, what are you doing, Google? You know, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to get on that rant again anytime relatively soon. So don't worry. Before you grow and roll your eyes, uh, you know, I'm just saying, a lot of people have said, you know, you know, it's kind of mean or immoral and ethical for Google to, without any kind of trial or without any kind of way to defend yourself or any kind of way to remove it, they'll definitely look for negative stuff about you and put it up there. And this could be, in Google's mind, this could be another reason why they do it, um, because, well, if people click it, if that's what they want, then that's what we're going to give them, you know? So, you know, the National Enquirer kind of, inquiring minds want to know about the dirt, and so they click on the dirt, and so that's why Google puts the dirt up there. And it's kind of a good uh, demarcation. You know, people are deciding whether or not it's a, it's a scammy, spammy thing, or if it's a legitimate thing, kind of all wrapped and based in this algorithm. So it's fascinating, fascinating that John gave us to sleep. Uh, and so this, this also gives us a lot of other information. For example, if you're an affiliate, uh, or if you're in a market, a very competitive market, you want to make sure you brand yourself separately. Uh, it's called brand differentiation. It's important for branding, psychologically speaking, anyone in branding or marketing will tell you, but it's now also doubly important because it works as part of the Google algorithms. Remember, Google is working really hard to make their algorithms think like a person. And so it's getting more and more that just regular branding and regular marketing is going to help you rank directly, not indirectly by getting links or social signals, but directly. They're directly making algorithms that work kind of like a human brain or work to use the human brain as much as possible and watch what humans are doing and clicking on and use that in their algorithms. And so if you're in a very competitive niche or you're in an affiliate market, which is obviously then also going to be a very competitive niche, you want to make sure you brand yourself differently. If the, the, the product is Red Apples, you want to be Red Apples Ultra or make up a name or Red Apples uh, uh, Maxo or you know whatever. Make up a name or brand yourself differently or Red Apples Scam, obviously Red Apples the best red apples, red apples reviews, people are probably already gonna have chosen those already. Uh, and if they haven't, do so, because then you'll, you can take that spot in the, in the SERP, because that would be a, a spot that the SERP would definitely normally have. No one's made a video about red apples yet, make a video about red apples. Uh, but probably if you're in a competitive niche, somebody already has. And so I've had a lot of success uh, in choosing, you know, red apples ultra, or red apples maxo, or red apples uh, 2014, or you know, something that's not as good, but although it has a date signal, which is good. But try and brand yourself slightly differently or, or you know, um, not even on the product name, something differently. So if you're in the herbal niche, like uh, some kind of herbal enhancement, herbal supplement, you know, you know, go for like luxury herbal spa or something along those lines. Um, so you can brand yourself differently. So you'll have a lot of benefits. One, you might seem like a legitimate site. Two, um, people might take you more seriously. Three, it might people might search for you in Google, and instead of searching for Red Apples and getting the main site, they might search Red Apples Ultra, because that's how they heard about it, and get your site, right? The specificity is different. Um, so, you, so you brand yourself differently, and even though you're just affiliate of the product. And of course, on your affiliate site, make sure to cloak all your affiliate links. Don't just no-follow them. Make sure to cloak them. So use JavaScript or some kind of, and robot out the JavaScript so Google can't tell if they're affiliate links. Uh, and, and even having an interstitial page so that Google can't tell you're forwarding to another page would be a really good idea. Otherwise, they will hit you for thin content. Unless you really go above and beyond to have your own perspective, and you should do this anyway. You should go above and beyond and have your own perspective on, on the product, have your own kind of take on the product, have your own value add on the product that nobody else has, or do it 
like a million times better than everybody else. Have a better design, be faster, have a better, better user interface, be funnier, be interesting, be kitschy, be sexier, be anything and everything you can be that makes it better. You should do that anyway, and also cloak your affiliate links because Google is a bunch of bastards who will hit you whether you have a good site or not. Um, and this is another reason why you want to do that because you want people searching for your brand. You want them to be like, Red Apple's whoopie doopie doopie doo, like what the hell is this? There's a little search it, and if you have enough links, you need searches as well, and that's going to trigger you for a Panda uh, update, which again, uh, a Panda check, you can tell because your, your crawl rate will go up like this around a panda and then check Barry Schwartz's site because he's good enough to say, I saw a bunch of stuff going on in the, SER uh, in the SERPs and I saw a bunch of uh, stuff going on in the forums, probably some kind of algorithm update. Google doesn't say anything. It was probably a panda update, especially if crawl rates are up at that time as well. So, and of course, remember, panda runs monthly every month. It takes about 10 days to roll out. You can be hit on the first day or the 10th day or any time in between. The crawl seems to happen through the entire time. You can get released or demoted at the beginning of the crawl period, and the crawl will still check. So it's like they check the pages. As soon as they find something they don't like for Panda or enough they don't like for Panda or enough they do like for Panda, they either release you or boost you or demote you. To my knowledge, I've asked John Mueller a number of times, and apparently Panda does not promote. It only demotes. So if you see your ranking go up on that time, you were hit by Panda and you didn't even know. Or everybody else in your SERP was hit by Panda and you just happened to float up. But if you also see a crawl uh, increase at the time, then you were also likely hit by Panda and, and uh, it either released you, it saw enough it liked and released you, even if the crawl was still going on, or it saw enough it didn't like and demoted you. And remember, what Panda looks for, just to, uh, I'm going to remind you, I'm going to keep reminding you, because remember, Panda is the worst algorithm they have. As much as I've complained about Penguin and manual actions, Panda is way, way worse, because it hits every kind of site. It hits uh, without any mercy. Uh, and whether, you've been, whether you've been doing Black Hat or you think you've been doing Black Hat or not, and uh, it does, they don't even announce it, and they don't even really tell you what to do or what not to do. Just make the best quality site possible, which, of course, is the dumbest and least actionable information you could ever have. I should thank Google for breaking it cryptic because it keeps SEOs like me in business, but it's not really nice for webmasters. It's not really great. And actually, I'd, I'd be perfectly fine with and I'd like it if they were a little bit more specific on that. As, you, as my longtime listeners will know, I've been very specific directly to Matt Cutt's face about um, so remember, Panda has a good list and a bad list. You know, things that they think are quality and things they think are bad. Again, unfortunately, they don't tell us what this list is. But, you know, things in the good list are like structured data, um, task completion, the page you can complete it right away, speed, uh, good user interface, things, things on the bad list, uh, uh, images and video, interesting content, uh, unique content. Um, lists that so people can very quickly find what they want or do what they want. Remember, task completion is job one for Google, and they're tracking it every which way. Don't 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 ever say they can't do it, they can't see it. Just don't don't play that game with the forty billion dollar profit tech company. Trust me, just make your site better. You'll convert better. It'll be a better site anyway. You'll make more money anyway. And trust me, they are tracking it in various ways for rankings. On the bad list, remember, there's stuff like um, duplicate content, stuff like slow, stuff like people bouncing around, stuff like people go to the page and they immediately click an ad and go somewhere else. John Mueller has directly said they track that. Stuff like um, uh, duplicate content, stuff like bad and poor uh, spelling and grammar, uh, stuff like keyword stuffing, stuff like bad links put on that page, uh, stuff like bounce back to SERP rate, people go there. They don't like it, they go back to the SERP, they click another result, or they do uh, they, they modify their search on the same topic. That is, again, been mentioned again and again and again, either used in a click-through rate algorithm that will demote you, or uh, used as, as part of Panda. Um, things like that. So, yeah, those are the kinds of things that are, are, are part of Panda, and so it's very interesting that John Miller made this leak. Uh, it's very interesting um, that... Uh, uh, that this patent that, that nobody could figure out how it was related to Panda, this is how it's related to Panda. So it's very, very fascinating stuff. Okay, and finally, John Mueller mentioned at the end of this uh, hangout on the 7th of April that, as I said it before, and I'll say it again, that if you get the partial penalty, the manual action that is only a partial penalty 
the action is only versus links that don't do anything. Do not disavow any links. They've already looked through your link profile and decided what links they are suspect, that they, don't, can't, they can't trust, and they have already moved them from your link graph for you. You do not need to go and throw more links onto the, onto the, onto the pile. It's not a penalty against the site. It's a penalty against your backlinks. And so the damage is already, excuse me, the damage is already done. You can't fix it, right? You, there's nothing to fix. They only keep it there so that you will fall into their ploy, into their paradigm of fear, and throw more links onto that fire and help train their machine learning as to what the bad links are. Uh, if they and if they release you, tons and tons and tons of people have said that your ranking, my ranking didn't go up. Why not? Because they already selected the links that they were suspect. Your rankings are not going to go up. In fact, your rankings are probably going to stay the same or go down because you threw more links in the disavow file, which removes them from your link graph. And John Mueller admitted completely he's done it before and he's done it again that the partial penalty does not need to be dealt with. They already dealt with it. Okay, now moving on. To April 11th, John Mueller had another hangout. He has lots of hangouts. He has hangouts and hangouts and hangouts, and we go crazy. So on April 11th, so, so don't go crazy, don't watch them, just watch me. I'll sum them up all, all up for you, with, with, of course, my own take. You know, I fully admit, I'm going to put my own take on it. But, but at least I give you the hangouts so you can watch it yourself, so if you doubt what I say, you can at least go check. So April 11th is the hangout in question. And Mr. Mueller says some more interesting things. Uh, he said that popularity is not the same as relevance. So he and he implied that both are required for ranking. So Matt Cutts has also recently put a video out on this. He also said that popularity is not the same as relevance. Popularity, he explained it, is more like happy traffic. Again, no bounce back to SERP, no immediate bounce out, no surfing around like they don't know what they're doing and it's a bad user interface and they can't use the navigation. And social talking, social talking about you. That's popularity. That's buzz. And buzz is getting huge. Buzz generation is the next big SEO tactic in 2015. Buzz generation is going to be it. People have been swearing by it for a while. I hadn't seen any results from it. I hadn't seen any evidence that it was helping ranking until now. I've recently uh, seen some, and I'm going to share this uh, experimental data with you. It was a very interesting experiment. I've recently seen the experimental data that, that shows pretty clearly that buzz generation, otherwise known as part of content marketing, uh, or content spamming anyway, is a huge SEO uh, ranking factor, and it's going to be the next big SEO ranking factor for 2015. Uh, it's, it's May uh, the 7th, I'm already saying it, for 2015, buzz generation is going to be the next big ranking factor. And I'm going to explain in my future Hangouts, and a little bit more in this one, but in my future Hangouts, exactly what I mean by that. But essentially it means you want as many websites out there talking about you as possible. It doesn't matter if there's just, it's also called positive co-citation, right? People have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, they've been using it as a ranking signal for a long time. They're dialing down links, as I predicted last year they would. They're dialing down links, as Matt Cuss just admitted they're going to in his video, and they're dialing up buzz generation. So you want forums talking about you, you want f you want social platforms talking about you, and they have their back-end deal with tons of social platforms called Data uh, data Partners, and also Google Plus, of course, and the big ones, Twitter, they can see. Facebook, not so much, because they can't, they can't. They do have an OAuth agreement. Ren Fishkin has admitted they do have an OAuth agreement with Facebook, but it would be a huge snafu if they got caught spidering the private pages. So um, I'm pretty sure they're probably not. So I wouldn't focus your time on Facebook unless you have a huge audience there and you can make money there. By all means, then focus on it. In our social programs, we do fo focus on Facebook for some customers because it makes sense. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste your time if um, I wouldn't waste your time if uh, you don't have a huge audience there or you haven't already got an established presence there. Uh, so anyway, buzz generations. You want people talking about you on forums. You want them talking about you on uh, on social platforms, and you want them uh, going to your site and uh, searching Google. Again, searching Google for your brand name and going to the site and clicking on it. And this is huge. This is huge. I'll talk about this more. Um, and so that's what popularity is. And of course, you do want some do follow links, but they can be all no follow links as well. Uh, you're going to need some do follow links still, but that's going to be going down in 2015. Uh, and pretty soon, the do follow links are going to be like the way social signals are now. Like, are they helping? Are they not? Like, you can't even tell. Uh, remember, Google is widening out all the signals they can use. 
Google is widening out the signals they want to use and widening out um, the confirmation, right? Because the more signals that are confirmed in different ways they use, the more safe it is that they know it's not a spammy thing, right? So John Mueller mentioned that in this in this hangout that popularity popularity is not relevance, and he implied strongly that both are required for ranking. He also mentioned, speaking of buzz generation, that it also applies to local SEO, that local sites need, and I quote, people talking about it in that area, end quote. So again, this is another aspect of buzz generation. People need, uh, you need to have people talking about your site, especially if you're a local site, you need people in that geographic area talking about your site. So how do you get that? Well, you go to local directories, you go to city-based forums or local forums, and again, social with uh, uh, all the geographic locations set there. Also, you need links from your local IP addresses. For IP addresses in the area, you need to get links from those areas. They can be no follow as well. Uh, do that because it's safer, uh, unless you can get really good safe links. Um, and you have to make sure you have consistent signals for local geographic ranking. Um, you don't want it to say that your, your href line says you're in uh, Canada when all the other signals say you're in the States. It has to all be consistent or that's going to confuse Google. And of course, Speaking of which, you have to make sure you're using the right currency, you're using the right kind of spelling, you're using the right kind of nomenclature, you're using the right kind of uh, uh, language for that geographic reason, region, sorry. And you don't, for that reason, in the region. In the region, for that reason. And you don't want to, um, again, going back to the beginning of my, my uh, hangout, you don't want to confuse Google by having off-topic content. So you don't want to have a site that's for... Canada and for the States and for Switzerland and for Australia. You want to make sure your site ideally is just based on one thing and make sure you have the hreflang set up, the hreflang HTML set up that tells Google exactly what this page is about and also go into Webmaster Tools in the geographic location. It's in the little um, uh, gear that's in the top right corner and click it and make sure you go to site settings and make sure you select the right geographic location, or check to make sure that Google has selected the right geographic location. Sometimes it auto-selects it, and sometimes it auto-selects it wrong, so make sure you do that. Okay, um, a lot of people have disavowed blogspot.com. It's one of the most disavowed domains. Uh, uh, remember that John Mueller has told us that disavowing blogspot.com will just include all their other TLDs, like .ca or like .whatever, .co.uk. Remember that disavowing is dangerous. Uh, you don't just want to throw links in your disavow file. Get an SEO expert to do a proper analysis of your site. You might not even need to disavow any links to begin with. Um, I still have a penguin fix, so you don't need to be disavowing or deleting any links uh, until we try the penguin fix. Uh, it's not 301, it's not deleting pages, it's not all the other tricks that you've heard about. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting trick. It won't do anything risky for your site. Google was not going to get angry at you and hit you extra hard because you did it. It's a, an interesting quality thing you can do that I've had some success. They could get rid of Penguin in 2 to 15 days. That's right. Get rid of Penguin in 2 to 15 days, depending on how well you do it and, and what other quality factors you have going on. Because remember, Panda and Penguin talk to each other, right? Uh, if you're bit by Penguin, that's definitely a check mark in the bad column. Uh, or if you've had a, you know, bad links, that's definitely a check mark in the bad column for Panda. So that's often the reason why people see that Panda and Penguin hit them at the same time. And don't forget, you can be hit by both algorithms or multiple algorithms at the same time, so you need to have an analysis done. You need to have someone check that out for you. Uh, you will never get out if you don't have an expert checking it out for you. Not to sound negative, but quite frankly, if you've got a bunch of stuff going on, it can get very complex. You need an expert to help you out. If you want that to be me, great. I'd love to help you out. Uh, my email address is joshpachinski at gmail.com. You can follow me at Twitter at Josh Pachinski, And uh, you can watch more videos and get more help, uh, free help, and get more do-it-yourself tips at, uh, from in my videos. If you want to do it yourself, by all means, check out my videos. They're free and they'll help you out uh, at uh, youtube.com slash jbachins, J-B-A-C-H-Y-N-S. Uh, and, of course, uh, if you have any other SEOs, if you have an SEO team, by all means, uh, look at my videos and have them help you out, but make sure you do the analysis. You can't fix it if you don't know what it is. You can't fix it if you haven't done a proper diagnosis uh, to see what's what's going on, what's wrong. Okay, now, um, for those who are worrying if you still have the manual action, John Mueller has reminded us again 
that if the manual action is removed in Webmaster Tools, then it's gone. There's no, he said again and again that that is not broken. That if the manual action is gone in Webmaster Tools, it's not listed there anymore, then the manual action is gone. And if you're wondering why hasn't my ranking increased, remember, because you just went and disavowed all your links, so your ranking is going to suck now because you just took away all your link juice. Uh, whether you had the partial penalty or the manual penalty, that's what you had to do to get rid of it. Uh, so, or, and, or, you might have something else wrong, like Panda and Penguin, which is entirely possible. Uh, so you've got to get that cleaned up too, or you will never rank again. And, or, the, the SERPs have changed. The, your competitors have gotten a bunch of links, uh, or they've gotten a bunch of social, or they have a bunch of buzz generation going on, uh, or they changed some on-page stuff to improve their SEO, and they're ranking better now. And so that's why you haven't popped up back to where you think you should be, like as if you had reserved spot four with Google, like that's your table. <laughs> that's not the way it works. It's always fluctuating. It's always changing. And uh, so don't be surprised, uh, you know, when you're hit by something, you come back, you come back to like spot seven when you were at four before, because things have changed, right? Uh, and so, you know, uh, you, again, you have to check everything. You have to take a holistic approach. You can't focus in, in positive SEO or in fixing what's broke. You can't get silo view. You, you can't focus on oh, it's all links or it's, it's all social or it's, it's all, you know, whatever, internal page hunt. You've got to do everything. You have to make sure you know everything you have to do, all the different algorithms. And there's tons of different algorithms and way that Google is ranking sites these days that you need to make sure your SEO knows about. And um, uh, you need to do them all. You need to be a journalist and do all of them and make all of them better. You can't just double down on links or triple down on links because they're ignoring those things and those things are going away. So uh, you need to do it all. You can't just or double down on exact match domains, right? Or you know, or you know that kind of thing. You need to have a complete marketing and branding strategy that includes a robust SEO strategy where you're hitting all the different algorithms. You're manipulating them all, right? Not just not just links. Okay, and here's a very interesting one. And uh, uh, some people like to use uh, a hero image in, de in design. What is a hero image? It's very common. It's like a big, pretty image at the top. Uh, my site that I recently did, themoralconcept.net, where I called out Google for being immoral, for disenfranchising uh, small businesses, used this exact tactic. It had a huge hero image at the top because my good friend uh, Clay Jackson designed it for me from Thetis Media. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't ask me to say that. He's just a great guy and a great designer, so I have no problem mentioning him. Check out his site if, if you want or not. Uh, but he, if you like to design, especially. Uh, but he did it, and he liked it, and I liked it. I liked the way it looked. Uh, very glacial, kind of kind of pristine kind of look, which is kind of what we wanted for the branding for the site. So um, a lot of people have been using these hero images. You know, Wired.com, a lot of big magazines do it too. But there's a problem with using the hero image. Is that is The question is, you have to know your audience. What does your audience want? Does your audience, uh, is it an editorial piece? Is your audience expecting a kind of pretty picture at the top and then they're going to read an editorial article? Or is it the lottery numbers or weather numbers where they don't want a hero image, they want to get right to the, the, the information they're looking for, right? So you have to know your audience, you have to check your analytics to see what your bounce rate is, to see what people are doing, what the user flow is on your site, what people are doing. And um, where, where they're clicking, you need to have a heat map software installed so they can, you, can, you can see where their eyes are going, what they're seeing, where they're scrolling, are they looking at the right thing, are they clicking on the right thing. Not only is this important for the health of your site and for um, your conversions and how well your site does with your users, this is important now for SEO. Google is directly tracking this. Trust me, guys. Google is directly tracking this. Uh, they'll, take, they'll take a sample set and make decisions on that, and they can get the data. Trust me. So, and remember, Google, it's one of the ways they're tracking it is this way. Like Google has an algorithm called the Page Layout Algorithm, or PLA. The Page Layout Algorithm. It used to be part of Panda in 2011, and in uh, early 2012, January 2012, if memory serves, they split, they split the Page Layout Algorithm out. They split it out from the uh, Panda Algorithm. And, um, and what the Page Layout Algorithm does is that it looks for excessive banners and excessive images at the top and will penalize that site if more than, John Mueller has admitted before, if more than 50% of your screen real estate is as banner ad or banner image, the page layout algorithm will, will, will hit you. It used to be part of Panda, now it's a separate algorithm that runs consistently because they consider that, whether it's AdSense or not, it doesn't matter if it's AdSense, if they can tell it's an ad, it'll hit you because they consider that a bad user experience. They don't want to just rank sites that just have an ad that will go somewhere else. 
they'll, they'll rank this site instead of this site that had the ad pointing to this site, right? They'll just cut out the middleman and they'll just go from SERP to this site or here, or some other option. And somebody asked, well, what about the hero image? Uh, designers love to use the hero image. Can that trigger the, PL, the PLA? And John Mueller said, drum roll, yes. He said, yes. He admitted it. Yes, point blank. That a big hero image can uh, trigger the page layout algorithm. Why? How? Because, again, they're tracking where people click. They're tracking if people bounce back to the SERP. They're tracking if people are dissatisfied with that information in any way and every way they can track it. So, yes, don't use the hero. Yes, Google can track it. Yes, it's going to hurt your rankings. Yes, do not use the hero image if it is going to annoy the user. If it's going to add to the experience, if it is going to please the user, then use the, a good hero image. Uh, but if it's going to annoy the user, if it is going to um, uh, annoy them, they're going to click back, or they're going to be like, I can't find the information I want, they're going to scroll around and start clicking around your site, can't find the information, and click back, or, or they're annoyed, Google's going to track that, the page layout algorithm is going to hit you maybe directly for having that, and it probably is still part of Panda. It's probably one of the bad quality things. It probably runs in the background, flags site, says, yes, it has big images. You know, um, yes, it has more than 50%. And then Panda probably uses that data off-site. So that it probably made, because when they, when they did it, they said we're making Panda more streamlined, making it faster. And then they also said in the same uh, algorithm release, remember they used to make these algorithm releases uh, that they don't do anymore uh, because they're uh, a bunch of immoral pricks. Um, because they're trying to obfuscate things to make it hard for people uh, to fix their site that they've, you know, they're trying to disenfranchise webmasters. So they're trying to make it harder for you to not be disenfranchised, right? Uh, so they don't release these algorithms anymore. But remember, what they, what, at that time, they did say that um, uh, that they're separating the, the Panda algorithm uh, from this algorithm. And I bet you the page layout algorithm works in the background and flags the site. And then when Panda comes around, It'll say, there'll be another check mark on the bad category. So three check marks, three strikes, you're out, kind of a deal. Who knows how many strikes it actually takes, but it could be like three strikes, you're out. Okay, so that is enough of a rant from me from today. Um, so uh, I wish you all the best. I wish you good luck. I'm going to be uh, traveling for the next two weeks. I don't know if I'll be able to make a, a video. I'll try to uh, get away. Uh, I have uh, family issues I have to deal with. Uh, family matters to deal with, uh, uh, and I'll be away for the next couple of weeks. But I'll try and make a video. I'm still working. Uh, if you have, if you're waiting for an analysis or if you're waiting for SEO work, the team's still working. I'm still working. I just don't know if I'll be able to get away where it's quiet and not having a screaming family throwing chairs at each other, which would be amusing on in its own right. Uh, but it probably wouldn't make for a good SEO video. So, but I hope to make a video. I'll try to make a video. And again, if you have any SEO questions at all, please do not hesitate to email me. I'd be happy to help you out. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, my email address is joshpachinski at gmail.com. Again, you can follow me at Twitter to get snide remarks at Matt Cuts and other SEO tips and other good information at Josh Pachinski. And again, you can watch more great SEO videos like this at youtube.com slash So I wish you good luck in the SERPs, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.